Sébastien, good afternoon, mon ami. Ça va? Bonjour, Alan. Ça va très bien, merci. Good to see you, my friend. I'm very happy to see you. You are a cool dude. You're always laid back. I see it's casual Monday. Where did I find you in the world today? So, uh, stuck at home in Paris. Unfortunately, I should have been at the office, but uh, we had a positive uh, COVID case. So, uh, we are stuck at home for one week. But you know, it's even better because now you are in my private place. So, you see uh, what I like and how it's decorated in, in my house. You literally brought us into your home. Thank you for your hospitality. You are a cool dude. You're a surf dude. I want to talk a bit, a bit later about that. You take your girl to your hometown, Biarritz. Yeah. You invited me to come surf with you, so I still have a rain check. Uh, <laughs> uh, please give us and our viewers uh, an introduction, please, Sebastian. Who are you and uh, who is Ulysse? Now, wow. Two, two important questions and uh, introduction will be, will be short. So uh, I've been working for 15 years now in the watch industry. I'm 41 years old. I started with Omega in the Swatch Group, working four years there. Then uh, I wanted to go into some disruptive company. I went to work for Nixon Watches, Californian cool way of life, Californian style, surf style. I did it for two years, and then I realized that my real passion for watches was on real haute complication and real horlogerie. So I went back to Giger Le Coult, and the last challenge uh, brought me to uh, Ulysse Nardin, and this is the real cool challenge that we are living here, you know. Ulysse Nardin, to, to tell you the long story short, uh, we have been uh, exiting for more than 170 years now. We were created in 1846. But this brand has never been well known in Western Europe. And my job, my challenge three years ago was to make the thing happen, to make Ulysse Nardin known in Europe. Still as a niche brand, but as a cool, modern, contemporary and sport uh, watch company. This is it. Awesome. So there's something interesting you said about the sports, and we'll talk about that a bit later. Um, so thank you for the introduction. It's a tradition on the Ace List Live to start with a wrist check before <laughs> we do anything else. Yeah, so, we know we know this uh, <laughs> special from Alan. <laughs> we we know your. I know that you are a watch nerd as well. I know you have a big collection. Obviously, you're wearing an Ulysse. What did you strap on today, my friend? So my favorite Ulysse one. Um, this is my uh, yeah. So this is my Marine Tourbillon. Okay. Yes. And you know, this watch for me is the real DNA of, of Ulysse Nardin. The DNA is linked to the marine world, to the exploration, and uh, my marine watch was exactly the same design as the marine chronometers that take 50 navies in one century. So first thing. Second thing, you have an auto horlogerie watch. The tourbillon is a dream for many uh, watch lovers. But additionally to that, you also have, uh, what, I don't know if you can see it, um, but you have... Um, here, the dial that is in enamel, mm -hmm. an enamel dial. And last but not least, um, as a Ulysse watch, you need to have this disruptive uh, detail. This tourbillon, you can swim with it because it's water resistant 100 meters. So during summer, I put a rubber strap on it. I go into uh, the sea. Uh, I can surf with it. I did it. And you know, it's a real tool watch. You can have a tool watch that is a tourbillon and it's this one. I was two weeks ago in a um, Formula One uh, circuit to do a uh, racing car. I was wearing my watch. I, I had saw an accident. I had, a, I had an accident. The car, by chance, had no, no, just some problem of painting, but the watch was perfectly functioning still after, you know. So you have 2J in your face, driving your car, and then accident, but the watch is still functioning. So that's cool. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. And, um, what is important, totally made in house. Yeah. Flying tourbillon. Yeah. The enamel dial is done in house. One yeah. of the specialties of release, which a few companies still master that technique, mm -hmm. an artisan technique. Yeah. Um, am I correct to say Grand Feu or is it regular enamel? Uh, this is uh, what we call guilloché flanqué. Guilloché flanqué. So right. you put a so the white on ones, the... the white ones are usually Grand Feu. Yes, the so why are Grand Feu, and we supply some other companies also. 
But this one is Guilherme Flanke, so um, it's uh, more difficult to do because you need to keep some transparency to see uh, the engraving, the silver dial. So it's much more the difficult. The dial is engraved with a guilloche, it's a pattern. Mm -hmm. And then enameling is basically glass and you paint it in different layers and bake them under high fire. So stunning, I love that watch. We have that in stock. And actually I can say, a super affordable. Exactly. 28k quality that gives waterproof as well mm. and anti-magnetic because uh, all the um, the art bit you know so the air springs the escapement wheel and uh, the anchor are in silicium in diamond silicium that is patented by Uli Stardom. which you guys were the first actually to launch that in the market over a decade ago in, 2000, in, two, in 2001 the first yes. freak so the first watch with no hands, no dial, and no crown was launched with a silicium escapement. Yeah, it's which the is first time ever. today. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. And I want to talk about a, a little bit more about that in a, in a, in a bit. Um, yeah. Me myself, I'm wearing the Freak X. I'm yeah. Totally in love with this watch. It was launched two years ago in Geneva during the uh, salon, the S I H H. Uh, it blew me off my chair. I always loved the Freak, but the Freak X is more modern. You can see it behind me. So this is the titanium version with a blue accent. I have the full DLC black titanium version. Both stunning. Uh, I love that watch. Enjoy it very much. Um, and a bonus for you guys. I put on the cufflinks Sebastian personally gave me. Thank you. So I'm thank wearing you. them. So thank you. Thank you. I'm enjoying them. Um, Bonus question, since we're on the topic, we often get the question, why an anchor, the logo? Ah, so it's all linked to the marine world. It's all linked to uh, the marine chronometer that we built during uh, one century. So maybe um, um, some people really know what is a marine chronometer, but let me just remind. A marine chronometer was uh, an onboard instrument, mandatory, be able to calculate your position in the ocean. The way in you're in the middle of nowhere in the ocean, how do you know if you are uh, five degree west or five degree east from your original position? It's with a time. And Uli Sardin was a master of the marine chronometer that helped you to calculate this time. Mm -hmm. One second of gap between the real time and the time indicated on your marine chronometer, it was a difference of 450 meters. So imagine, oh, you say, okay, one second, uh, 400 meters, it's nothing. If you arrive in New York, you can see and, and you can modify your position. But if it's yeah. five seconds a day during one month, instead of New York, you arrive in Acapulco. So That's what happened to Columbus, basically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. So, and that that's the heritage towards also your piece, but we'll mm -hmm. dive in to that later. Should we do the format of the ace list? Seven questions that we ask all our guests? Yes, I'm ready. Right. So I always read out all the questions because we broadcast every episode afterwards as a podcast as well for people in the car, at the gym, or on the bicycle. Um, the first question is, what watch or jewel is your favorite and why? So um, I'll be trivial, but my favorite watch is the one I'm wearing. I have the chance to choose. What I what I love, and I, I could take some more um, expensive watches, but I really I really wear this watch because um, you know a watch or a jewel for for a man is uh, is the only accessory that reflects your personality and who you are. And I love to have story to tell. I love to transmit emotion, and I love to have emotion when I watch at uh, my watch. And looking at uh, my dial, my tourbillon. Uh, being able to do everything with it, you know. Uh, honestly, I understand when people say, well, you know, I buy this brand because uh, uh, I can cook with it, I can swim with it, uh, I don't have to think to change the watch if I go on the beach or whatever, blah, blah, blah. But they're right. And what I love with this tourbillon uh, is to be able to do everything. As I said, racing car, surf, diving, cooking, but wear it also with my suit or wear it uh, in more casual way. So it's cool. And when you change the strap of the watch, you can put it on a bracelet or on a rubber. Personally, I don't like bracelet. I prefer rubber. Mm -hmm. It's much more comfortable. So cool. So um, this is it. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Second question we have is what did hmm. you want to 
be when you grew up? Well, you know, as many kids, I, I had many dreams. But uh, the ones that stayed in my mind uh, until I was 15 or 16, I, I wanted to become a volcanologist. Really? To study, yes, to study volcanoes. To, You know, uh, one of my first trips with my parents when I was a kid, it was in, an, in a French island called l'Ile de la Réunion, where you have mm -hmm. a, an active volcano. And I could see the eruptions and all that stuff. And it was crazy. I said, wow, this is cool. I'd like to, to go and study it and, and to be next to the volcano and, and to go all around the world to see this. So it was really cool. And I really wanted to do it. But it was the dream of the job. When I got uh, serious information, because I was really motivated, I, I started to see that uh, you needed to mainly study stones, to yeah. mainly analyze and, and follow uh, some computers, see if there are going to be uh, an earthquake or whatever. So it was a so boring job, very far from the dream I have. So I said, okay, it's not for me, Let's do something else. That's funny. So actually, you inspired the R and D team to make this watch. That <laughs> was you or this volcano lava inspired watches. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Or oh, it's because uh, you know, all in Ulysses now we have a we have a fire burning into our heart, and so um, that's that's maybe why I'm here also. That's that's true. You're very passionate. You're very very positive, and you have deep knowledge and you're one of the few uh brand managers in the market that we know that goes that deep you always share your knowledge whenever you visit us and your team members as well always sharing nuggets of information and that's why i'm so happy to have you on the show so let's keep going and please share that deep knowledge <laughs> thank Very you positive. who's your role model hey i'm gonna surprise you but uh, honestly i don't have role model Okay. Um, That's awesome. Nice. No, I, you know, how, how I work is really simple. I always uh, ask me three questions. Where am I? Where do I want to go? And how, I, how can I go there? Mm -hmm. And every morning when I wake up, the first thing I ask myself when I look uh, into the mirror, am I a good guy? Am I in line with my values, with uh, who I want to be? And for me, this is the most important thing, is to be in line with yourself. I don't want to, to be someone else. And uh, of course, you have some inspiration with uh, the book you read, with uh, the culture you, you discover, with religions. You know, I'm half Asian, so I, I was really inspired by the Buddhism. Uh, I'm doing meditation. What is really important to keep safe and to keep uh, open-minded. It's the most important thing. Two things I want to say. Thank you for sharing that. Two things. You actually very much have Ulysse now then DNA running through your veins because you're like a captain who navigates. So <laughs> your compass is your intrinsic moral code. Good for you. Talking about meditation, we all live in this high paced society. And I know you, active brain, you're always active. You run a young family. Your wife is an entrepreneur, <laughs> um, young kids. How do you cut, carve out time for yourself to meditate? And when do you do it? Always a fixed time or whenever the day suits you? Well, it depends. You know, the most important things, and I try to do it, but it's sometimes complicated. I try to meditate only two minutes a day. No more. Mm -hmm. It's sufficient. But these mm -hmm. two minutes, where you focus on the present, where you focus on your uh, inspiration, expiration, when you just... When you're just here where you are, mm -hmm. these two minutes are important. And it depends. Um, when I started meditation, I was doing it in the morning when I woke up. But finally, it was not uh, fitting good. So now I prefer to meditate uh, at night mm -hmm. before going to bed. Mm -hmm. So you reflect on the day, reset, calibrate, and go to sleep. Yeah. And okay. stop all screens 30 minutes before going to bed. Yeah. It's really good. important. No know. blue light. Yeah, and just focus your brain on something that is next to you. When you are with this, you know, uh, you're not at home. You're not with your wife. You're somewhere else. Mm. Good. So, Thank you for sharing. If you can teleport tomorrow, where would you go is our first, fourth question. You know that I'm a Paris lover. So as I'm in Paris, I would teleport myself. 
in Paris. Good. All right. Paris so you, love is, um, you know, Paris is, is um, okay. I'm Parisian, so what I would say obviously is not uh, completely uh, um, honest, but uh, it's my city. Um, City like Paris is um oh, is yeah. what give us a tip what you love the most in Paris. Where should we go when we travel again? Yes. That is not uber touristic. That's so, not in the guides. Where you should go, you should go into uh, uh Le Quartier Latin, the fifth district, that's the student district, next to Le Panthéon La Sorbonne. This is my mm -hmm. favorite place because you have nice monuments, mm -hmm. you have the, the Jardin du Luxembourg, so it's nice garden where you, when you can have a rest. But also you have the, all these small and old buildings uh, from the Middle Ages. So you will feel a small village that was Paris originally. You'll be able to have nice cuisine in some small brasserie. And you feel you're outside of, uh, of time. Amazing. And then oh. you can go to Saint-Germain-des-Prés also. These are my two favorite districts. And honestly, uh, I like traveling all around the world. And I like coming back to Paris. Good, that's home. Yeah, but also please, to the ones that are listening to us, come to Paris, we need you, so. Yeah, good. Fifth question, what book are you currently reading? Oh, well, I'm, I'm reading a lot of books um, generally, because it's, it's a part of the culture. But there are some books that I love to read again and again. And there are two books uh, that I particularly love. One is called Belle Amie from Guy de Maupassant, from the 19th mm -hmm. century, a French uh, writer. And the second one, what is my real favorite book that I'm reading for the moment, maybe for the first time, is The Count of Monte Cristo from Alexandre Dumas. Mm -hmm. And this book for me is, uh, is the most amazing book uh, that I ever read uh, because it makes uh, adventure. It makes uh, description of uh, upper class uh, a society in the 19th century in Paris. It also asks you some question about revenge, about uh, being in um, in uh, in line with what you are. And sometimes you think you're stronger than you are really. Uh, if you take Edmond Dantes, because of his revenge, he wants to he wants to hit and murder all those people who did bad things to him. But finally, he realizes that it's a nonsense. So. These books where you have full reflection, full question about yourself also, um, it's interesting. You know, I don't like um, easy books where you just have a main story and that's it. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. Sixth question is, what do you think is going to be the color of 2021? <laughs> and you guys have been uh, pushing the envelope on colors. We just saw the magma and uh, you guys working a lot with white. So, yeah, so, um, okay, if I, if I were totally uh, Ulysse Nardin, I would say the blue because it's our color. And so uh, the great majority of our, of our watches are, are sold in blue. What mm -hmm. is uh, very rare, you know, because normally you sell more white or black, but for Ulysse Nardin, it's the blue. We have been doing blue for a lot of years. So now uh, we launch a lot of pieces in white and, and in black and red, okay, because it's uh, the season of the exploration of the extremes. So ice and fire are the two main ten. But for the world, uh, let me expect that the color for next year will be green because it's the color of hope. And we need uh, some positive uh, vibes and some hope for the future. Mm -hmm. Good one. Last question. Rhetorical question, because I just said you visit us often. Oh, so you've yes. been to Amsterdam, but what's yes. your favorite memory? Well, you know, first, uh, I didn't wait to, to work for Listana to go to, to Amsterdam and to Holland. My first trip was in 1993. So I was 14 years old. Um, and I love coming to Amsterdam. It's much more for the atmosphere. It's mm -hmm. contrary to Paris, what is a stressful, a stressful city. Mm -hmm. uh, you can feel the vibes that are cool in Amsterdam. People are soft. And it's good to arrive with, uh, you know, to have a walk on the canals. To feel these this good vibes. But the best place for me in Amsterdam is the Modern Art Museum mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. I really love uh, to see the Mondrian uh, paintings. It's, 
And it's, you know, it's next to the, to the Van Gogh Museum, but it's totally the opposite because you have no queue, you have nobody in this museum. And please don't go to this museum because when I want to go there, I like when it's empty. So all go to the Van Gogh Museum and leave me in, uh, in this uh, real nice museum that is your modern art museum in Amsterdam. Nice. Which is literally around the corner. Yeah. <laughs> and you exit our door here. You walk into the modern arts, which is called the Stedelijk Museum. So thank you for that. Thank you for sharing. Sebastian, I see the questions are flowing in. Yeah. We have a, well, let's say halfway. Um, there's a lot to discuss. You guys, I think, stole the show during the Geneva Watch Days at the end of August. I was literally, I was, I was literally blown away by the blast, which is your new watch. If I understood correctly, a year and a half to develop a complete new caliber, which is uber fast, to be on flying. It's kind of a skeleton in a framework that square with an X inside. Micro rotor, if I'm not mistaken, the first time for Ulysse. And 72 hour power reserve. So for micro, micro, rotor, rotor. micro rotor, which is a difficult combination because mm -hmm. you need to generate that energy. I love the case. I love the fracture, the contemporary case. The, the, the lugs have a fracture in there, which I think is mind blowing. Um, the, the, I'll, I'll screen, I'll sh in my enthusiasm, I'm forgetting to share the screen. So this is a gold version. Um, and, and then a few days later, when this wasn't enough, you guys launched this. Oh, this. And that hey, blew yeah. me away. The sparkling yeah. one. This is amazing because you wanted to uh, reenact ice and looking here where my mouth goes. I've never seen a watch like this. So, the, and, and, and as a diamantaire, I know how difficult it is to even source these diamonds, cut these diamonds, and then set these diamonds. So, I love it. I would I would like to ask you, please tell us more about the blast. Yes. I want to talk about the sharks behind me. Yes. I want to talk about the X. Why is X such an important theme? Yes. And I want to know with your new CEO, Patrick, who's an amazing guy, you guys set in a new direction. You're navigating on the heritage you had. Mm -hmm. Amazing. He's not altering it. He's just, it's an evolution. And there is a new, now I think he's there two, almost three years. Yeah, I arrived same, same, same months as me, 15 days yeah. of difference. Yeah. But it's so two years ago. And, and now you're seeing a new release design code. And I would love to talk about that because you also love design. You just said it, you love the modern arts. Yeah. And these watches, actually, the new collections, especially the Blast, in my humble opinion, can go into the museum. It can be displayed there. So yeah. those are the things that I wanted to discuss. Mm -hmm. you know, we need to keep track of time because you and I love to chat, uh, that we give our audience chances to ask you questions as well. Okay. So I'll shut up now, and the floor is yours. Hey, <laughs> thanks. Can I share my screen? Because I have one image that's, that uh, will answer a lot of questions to you about the X, about <clears throat> the blast. I don't think you can, because uh, we're moderating the back end here. Okay. Is there a link? Yeah. You can, send, can you shoot me a link? We have a private chat here. If you want, send me a chat. Oh, and I'll yeah. display it for you. Or if okay. you have an image, email it to me. Yeah, I'm going to share this image. Hold on. You know what? I'm going to send it to you through WhatsApp. Take just a picture, <clears throat> and you will be able to... No problem, I'll display it. Exactly. Because um, your question is really interesting because um, you're in the heart of the, of the, of the, of the topic, you know. Uh, you start and change a lot in three years. Uh, it's true that if you take uh, um, a picture of uh, what was the brand three years ago and what it is today, uh, a lot of things has changed. Mm -hmm but always, always in the DNA of the brand. So it's really important to understand the DNA of the brand to be able to understand why what we are doing now is still really snarling, okay? So, <clears throat> so, so let me come back. Where are you? Okay. So it's a bit yeah. uh, blurry. Yeah. Sebastian just shot an image of his yes. computer. Screen. Yeah, so sorry for the bad quality. Yeah, no problem. As long as we get the message across. So Ulysse Narda, to, to make uh, the long story short, 
has always been the order and the disorder, okay? The order is the link to the marine world, the link to um, the exploration, okay, is um, the, the haute complication. And the disorder has been always the innovation. It has always been um, the way to do things differently. You know, when we launched our first, um, our, our first uh, marine chronometer um, plant, we had the opportunity to do 100 pieces a year. And people say, you're crazy because we are obviously selling one or two pieces a year before. So they said, you're going to be on overcapacity. But finally, we became the leader because, um, because uh, Paul David Nardin had the vision that there was a potential there. So, And the X is, um, is the link between everything. The X, you know, it's the X of exploration. It's mm -hmm. the X of the unknown. And the unknown is the exploration. The X represents also where you put a hidden treasure uh, on a map. So it has a lot of um, a lot of signification. I'll, if I may, I always say, especially Americans understand it, it's also the <laughs> X factor. The X factor, it's true. And so the X is also the excess. And you understand better that <clears throat> with the X, you have the two parts of Felix Nardin, the exploration, mm -hmm. the excess, the extremes. Mm -hmm. And each season for the last three years, we have been launching new models and <clears throat> using the X. So the first was uh, the X-ray experience with the Freak X mm -hmm. and Skeleton X. Mm -hmm. Then last November, we launched the Diver X through the exploration because the Diver X is uh, the watch which we launched for the uh, Vendée Globe, what is the last exploration race. It's going to start the 8th November. Um, it's um, it's a very very interesting uh, sailing race because it's the only race uh, you go through all around the world alone with no assistance in a in a boat that is 18 meter. Okay, so you go to the Cape Horn, you go to the Nemo Point, you go to the Antarctica, you go to uh, the Cape of Good Hope. The fastest does it in 70 days alone with no assistance. The last one with a uh, this boy, uh, it was Sébastien Destremo. He did it in 124 days alone with no assistance. He had a lack of food and water in the end, but he finished it. And there was uh, 100,000 people to, uh, to, to applaud him when he arrived. This is the last exploration and experience race. And it's a double exploration race. An exploration because you go somewhere where nobody goes, just this boat, you know, the demo point, what is um, uh, the, uh, the point that is uh, farthest from any earth. It's uh, 2,700 kilometers from any earth, any rock. And your uh, closest neighbor is the astronaut in the, um, in the international station. So when you are there, you're in the middle of nothing. And it's also a race where you explore yourself. Mm -hmm. Am I able to do it? alone with no assistance. When I have waves that are doing 25 meters going on my face, why am I there? Why did I decide to go there? So it's a double exploration. And so the X for the Diver X was the exploration. Yeah. Now with Blast, we arrive in the exploration of the extremes mm -hmm. because Blast is an extreme watch. Yeah. And the extremes are represented by ice and fire. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, if you, if you talk in terms of design, there is always an inspiration in terms of design. You know, um, Jean-Paul Gaultier is a French uh, creator in, a, in a haute couture. Which yeah, is not your family. You're Gaultier yeah. and you're talking yeah. about Gaultier. <laughs> yes. Uh, and Jean-Paul Gaultier, uh, one um, journalist asked him, hey, how do you get the inspiration, Jean-Paul? It's so amazing what you're doing. You're doing crazy things. <clears throat> and Jean-Paul just said, I'm just having a look around me. I'm traveling. You know, uh, inspiration is not coming like this. You need to have something that inspire you. For Blast, that you can see on the video, the inspiration is the F-117, the stealth fighter. Just for the design. I'm not talking about, um, about the spirit of, of the watch, but just for the design. You know, the anger that you see on, on, on the legs and on the face are the exact design of the F-117 stealth fighter. So that's it for, for the design. And this is crazy because it's the first time that you admit you choose a, a stealth fighter to do a watch. Yeah. But we like, we like this thing and this is into the fire. 
Uh, and it's also a part of Ulistana. As I said, Ulistana, it's exploration, exploration of the extremes, innovation. So glass let's talk about that. The innovation, the exploration, and seeking the frontiers of new. Exactly. That design of the blood. I mean, the last three years, we've gone more contemporary. Mm -hmm. Forget about this. This is amazing, super contemporary. Um, and we'll talk about the Freak X maybe a bit later. But where do you guys find that contemporary um, design? Because maybe it's fun to know. Um, Patrick is a watch guy, Swiss guy. Watch yes, guy? French guy. French, French guy. sorry. Yes. French. Us stupid North Europeans always think it's the same. <laughs> I'm kidding. So French guy, worked in Switzerland a long time. Mm -hmm. Many years with Apple. But yeah. came back where his heart belongs, watchmaking. And today he runs Gérard Pergo and Dulis now then. So yeah. he's a busy guy. Would you find parallels there? Did, do you think that inspired him also to go more contemporary? Whereas we see a lot of retro trends in the watchmaking. There is not much innovation, especially in design-wise. Let's park the innovation of technology and the inside of movements. There, there's, that's continuous. But design-wise, I find it rather boring. I always, and I don't mean it's disrespectful, but I call this a baby MBNF, a baby Uwerk. These guys are the front runners. They're out there, but the price is also out there. And the production is very limited. But what you guys established here, it's not little money, but compared, it's very low. It's a good investment. So, it's an aggressive price positioning. Yeah. You know, very, I don't like the, the, the word low because it's still. It's still no, low. Okay. So I translate that from Dutch. But. Uh, yeah. Because in, yeah, I mean. in Dutch, the aggressive has a bad connotation. Okay, but, so it's, it's but, extremely well placed. Extremely well placed. Extremely um, well placed. So well placed that it's sometimes unbelievably, it's unbelievable and it's difficult to explain. So, so what did you guys do to get to the blast design? So uh, I think we should ask Jean-Christophe Sabatier, who is our, our product director, and honestly, for Blast, uh, he showed us a picture of the F117 and he said, this was my inspiration for the design, nothing else. Okay. Now, your question is interesting about contemporary design. We are doing uh, contemporary design, but it's not new. If you look at the Freak 20 years ago, when this crazy watch was launched, it was the only watch with no hands, no dial, no crown. And it was giving time, okay? It was a, it's still a mechanical watch. To make a success of, of, uh, of a watch brand, you need not to modify the DNA. You need to accept, to understand the DNA, and maybe sometimes to focus on some points. Before, we were mainly focused on marine world, okay? Um, and, and before that, you know, uh, Rolf Schneider, he was, he was not a marketing guy, he was the former um, owner of the brand. He was into, he was into movement. So uh, we could have, one movement with one new case. He was not thinking about, okay, this is your list or not. He said, I like it or I don't like it. With um, Patrick, and because the society has changed, we need to have uh, uh, nice visibility and to be able to have people uh, giving definition words about your list. Now you can say, when you talk about your list, okay, it's a niche brand due to their production, what is limited, but it's a contemporary and sport watch. This is clear, okay? Um, and it's important to have a good vision and good personality to make people uh, having clear ideas about who you are. This is why um, this year we, we focus on Freak X, Skeleton X, Blast, because it's a part of the DNA of the brand in innovation in terms of design. And it's exactly what, we're, what we are doing with Blast. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, these uh, very interesting insights. Shall Thanks. we? I, I continuously am afraid of the shark as if he's coming to eat me. Shall we talk <laughs> about, shall we talk about um, why a year plus you guys started with sharks swimming in between urban landscapes? <laughs> Other people thought it was um, 
just a stupid marketing gimmick, which it's not, because mm -hmm. I think it's brilliant. You guys, if I understood it correctly, how I interpreted it, is you did two things. You married the marine heritage with contemporary urban lifestyle and emphasizing on um, freedom. Being exactly. a shark is very free, right? He's basically the king of the ocean. Yeah, so, you can also understand like this, but uh, <clears throat> I, I'm, I'm glad that you said that because it's exactly uh, what was um, the target when we when you listen uh, launch the, the shark. Um, the shark has been used uh, by by some other brands, uh, and it's still used, but it's always underwater. Yeah. Okay. It's so common. Yeah. Um, with the shark in the middle of the street, exactly what you said. Uh, you have the marine heritage, the contemporary aspects, the lifestyle, and you in the you start our world. Our, our world is manufacture of freedom, but mm -hmm. it's not only um, let's say a, a marketing design. We are involved in the shark. What I mean in the shark life, in the shark preservation. What you can see right now, this boat is the boat of the association O Search, and O Search is studying sharks. How? Not uh, not fishing them and uh, with the risk to hit them. No. What we do, it's like in Formula One, a pit stop. So we block the shark in a small box, as you can see. We put this platform up outside the uh, outside the water. Then we do a lot of uh, analysis, test, uh, vaccine to the shark. We put a GPS uh, balise on him, and then we can follow uh, his uh, his life. Uh, we can know where he's going to have reproduction and, and to avoid fishing around uh, this uh, area when he's there. You know? So we, it's not only having um, an ambassador. Uh, it's not only that. You know, when Ulysse Nardin is launching uh, watches or when we are doing something, it's not only launching a watch or launching a new communication tool. It's a world story. It's a world 360-degree concept. What we like is uh, transmitting emotion. We are not selling watches. We are selling pleasure. We are selling emotion, happiness to people. And uh, the most important thing is not having a nice watch on your wrist. It's having a nice watch and a nice story to tell. So when you are having a Ulysse Nardin uh, diver watch, you can say yes, but you know, it's a nice diving watch, as many diving watch you can buy from other brands. But also, it's not done. It's involved with oceans, with the preservation of the shark, what is their main ambassador. Uh, they are doing um, uh, things with uh, also Fred Bird, who is a um, uh, free diver and also involved in, in shark preservation. So it's not just communication and marketing. It's real involvement of the brand. Thank you so much. We, we have so much to discuss. And I think we definitely should do another session with Ulysse. Yeah, let's do two more. With Ulysse. Uh, we can do a panel discussion. Um, one thing that I wanted to ask you or mention, um, I think you guys are doing a tremendous job. And you also, there is a movement going on about sustainability. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I know you guys do a lot about that. Could you maybe share a little bit what Ulysse does regarding sustainability? True, true. So first, um, first, it's important to say that uh, Ulysse Tarna is a part of the Caring Group, and Caring Group is really involved in sustainability. Um, we, in every detail, when we do things, we need to think about sustainability. To give you an example, when uh, we create, when we do now caps, even caps, you know, it's it's nice goodies that you can get in uh, in events or whatever. We do uh, recycled material for the caps. Same thing for, same thing for the text, uh, for everything we do. And obviously, in the watches uh, we are doing, for example, when we use the carbonium, the carbonium is a recycled carbon fiber. Mm -hmm. You have 40% uh, less uh, carbon footprint using carbonium than using another new uh, material. Yeah. Uh, we are working on projects that you will see in November uh, about sustainability, but um, in every step, in every step of the watch development, but also in every um, floor of the brand, we are thinking about sustainability because we have to do it. It's the future of, uh, we, we just have one life and one earth. So uh, please try to keep it. And, and it's also the reason why to use sharks again. Exactly. It's yeah. also what we do with sharks. 
Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, Sebastian, uh, we're uh, way uh, uh, ahead of our uh, schedule. Um, I have so much more to talk to you. Thank you so much up until now. I love your passion and energy. Should we dive into some questions? My previous pleasure. All right. So let's see. Um, on YouTube, Melvin, part of hello, the hello. <laughs> Hey, I'm very funny. Thanks for following me on Instagram, and I also follow you. It's cool. Always with uh, nice watches. He adds a question. The question is split in two. Melvin yeah. is asking on YouTube, which Ulysses Nardin collection is your favorite and why? We, okay, we discussed so we, which watch. Let's say what collection. Yeah, it's true. So, you know, now, and it's an interesting question because my favorite watch is the Marine, okay? But my favorite collection is the Freak. Uh, why is a freak? Because uh, maybe I'm a little bit crazy. This is why I'm working for this. But I like the craziness of the concept. You know, when you tell people, uh, have a look to this watch and read time on it, say, how can we? Hey. And when you ask the question, how do you adjust the watch? There is no crown. Oh, I don't know. No, to surprise people, it's so cool. And um, yes, this is it. Perfect. Thank you for asking. Kentaro is saying hi, everyone. And he adds a question. I love the vintage Ulysse Nardin hand winders. Mm. Thank you for sharing that, Kentaro. We're saying hi back. Are there today still hand wound calibers in the current collection, Sebastian? Trick question. So, uh, hand winders, yes, we still have. You, you guys don't do quartz, you pure manufacture. Pure mechanical. We are we are not having any parts. Majority is automatic. Yes, but uh, if you take the freak, for example, the freak out, it's an eight day power reserve uh, movement, but it's a manual. Uh, uh, it's manual, but not with the crown, with uh, with the case back of the watch. Yes. Um, yeah. If you take uh, the, uh, we have quite a few uh, tourbillons that are uh, mechanical. And if I'm uh, thinking about um, basic pieces, there are many automatic. No, it's, it will may be mainly on um, on the freak that you will find it on uh, the skeleton uh, tourbillon also, the eight day power reserve mm -hmm. on the Ulysse Encore on the free wheel. For example, the free wheel executive free wheel. It's a crazy piece because it's a mysterious watch. You have no bridge and you don't know how each independent element can give time. Uh, I like uh, these surprising watches. It's also an uh, eight-day power reserve uh, manual uh, winding uh, watch. Perfect. Thank you. So the next question on YouTube is another watch for crew member. This is Rocky. Sebastian. Yeah, hi, Why Rocky. Can we expect a green dial Ulysse Nardin Marine Tourpoyeur. So uh, green uh, green dial is a funny story because I tried uh, two years ago to do a limited series in enamel dial for the marine tourbillon in green for the British um, British market. Uh, unfortunately, we could not go uh, more into deep, uh, but uh, it's not going to be this year. Not this year. Not this year. And 2021? I don't know. <laughs> All right, Rocky, stay tuned. Melvin is back and he's asking in the vanilla lineup of the U, you list down then diamonds seems to be reserved for ladies models. What's your personal opinion regarding diamonds for men watches? So if, if you have a look to the sparkling blast, <laughs> it's a 45 please show, show the picture again. Uh, it's a 45, for it. mi 45 millimeters watches. Uh, if you take uh, uh, the Genghis Khan, so many diamonds uh, for main watches are on our uh, complication. Okay, so uh, the minute repeater with uh, with automaton, um, the, the royal blue, uh, the blast. Um, honestly, it, it's cultural. Uh, in Europe, for example, in France, if you wear a diamond uh, as a man, uh, it's not the most common, I would say, and some people would love. But uh, in the Middle East, in Asia or in Russia, wearing diamonds for a man uh, is totally normal. So even in, in the US. And honestly, uh, I wore this piece in the Geneva watch days 
when you wear this piece, uh, you're not talking about uh, having diamonds for men or women. You're talking about a masterpiece that is having 211 diamonds with 85 different cuts. And when you talk about this, it's not a question of uh, man or woman. It's just a masterpiece. It's art. Yes. It's art. This is a piece of art. Yeah. So if you want to buy a diamond watch as a man, feel free to do it. Well, you just answered his his question was so long, so YouTube cut it in two for our uh, back uh, end. So he answered your question. If you want to know more, Melvin, keep them coming, please. Um, let me see. The next question is on Facebook by Bas Dekkers. He writes in Dutch, Fransman die Engels spreekt altijd 100%. He translates. He basically loves a French accent. <laughs> so, Thank you. <laughs> it's music in his ears. Thank you for joining, Bus. Oh, we have our friends from Fratello Watches joining us. Hello. Hi, right oh, on YouTube. We have another Fratello team member on Facebook, Girard Naim Rings, a walking watch encyclopedia. He's asking or stating, I understand the statement that Ulysse Nardin doesn't sell watches, but it sells pleasure. Can we anyhow accept any useful for daily life technical innovations from Ulysse Nardin again in the future? And I assume his again refers to the silicium. Well, um, useful for daily life, it's, uh, it's quite a large uh, question because uh, I was talking about my watch. It's a tourbillon, uh, tourbillon so it's, it's really useful for daily life because you have a lot of precision. And as I said, I use it to to drive a racing car in a Formula One uh, circuit. Uh, all our watches, you, you can use it daily. You know, it really depends on what you do. Uh, I would say that um, if you want, uh, for example, if you need an alarm, we already have uh, watches with an alarm. We have uh, the hour strikers that uh, bears the hours and, and the half of hours. Um, we have uh, annual calendars with chronograph. We have also uh, the countdown pieces, uh, that is uh, the marine um, we did for the for the America's Cup. So we have a lot of useful computers. You launched last week the new dual time? The new dual time? The new dual that time with you... a lot because you swing through time zones by clicking. Exactly, you can show a picture. And what is interesting, you know, uh, Gerard, on, on your question is that on all our watches, even the most affordable, if we take the new dual time, you will have a big date, what is useful, that you can adjust backward and forward. So we always think about um, easy to use watch for the people who buy it. So you have a big date, you adjust the um, you adjust the local time by a two pusher, one to go backward, one to go forward. You have a small second, so what is nice for, uh, for um, visibility. And uh, it's a very affordable price for what it is because it starts at 8,000. So for me, the exact example of uh, the complication, useful every day. It's anti-magnetic because it's in silicium, so uh, but very affordable also. And it's what we like to do. But when you have this piece, you're not only having a dual time, you're also having uh, an executive uh, watch, so contemporary watch with a mix of materials. So you have nice things to, to explain, a nice story to tell. Perfect, thank you. So I don't know if it answers the question. question. But, uh, I, think you, I think you answered very well. And if he still has questions, he'll shoot them in. He's a good <laughs> journalist, Gerard. Gerard. I'm, try, I'm, I'm copying you. See, I'm saying it French. <laughs> um, we had some questions uh, sent in to us to viewers who couldn't join live. And obviously, this, this episode will be airing afterwards on the acelist.com. Um, we received the questions, any good advice? for a young watch wow. enthusiast? <laughs> oh. Well, complicated question. It depends on what is a good advice. Uh, <laughs> what do you expect? Uh, my advice, my advice, never buy a watch to say it's an investment. Buy a watch because you have pleasure to wear it, because you love it. Don't buy a watch because uh, your friends say, hey, you should have this watch. Uh, everybody's got it. No. As I said, uh, wearing a watch is a part of your personality. So if you want to be different, uh, if you want to assume who you are, 
do what you want. If you feel a watch is really nice and all your friends say it's ugly, but you don't care. It's your own watch. It's your pleasure to, to wear it. So the first advice is just buy watches that gives you pleasure and emotion. Second thing, it's really important, buy watches that has a manufacture movement because it's Ooh. a part of the dream to, to be sure that the company who sells you the watch is the company who produced the movement. And last, uh, last advice would be um, buy a watch that you can wear um, in, in great moments of your life. So something that can a adapt to your, to your way of uh, dressing. I think these are two very good advice. I love the fact about the investment. I always say the same. Follow your own style. Buy something you love and you wear. Watches are not meant to put in safes. And they're not meant to show off. They need to give you pleasure. And that's what the Freak X does for me. <laughs> Every time I look on my wrist, I'm like, I get, I freeze for three to five seconds. I look at the balance wheel. And then like, oh yeah, why was I looking at my wrist? Oh yeah, to see what time it is. Yeah. And initially it's difficult, but after five times, you're like, oh, you immediately spot the hour hand. And it's mesmerizing. So that gives me joy. And uh, only connoisseurs know what you're wearing. And I love it because it's really a stealth watch. It's black. But only collectors know what it is. Exactly. And, um, so, yeah, I think you gave them a very good advice. About the manufacturer, though, it's interesting you mentioned that, Sebastian. Because the next question that was sent to us yes. was, did you listen to start using non manufacturing movements recently? And if so, why? So we did not start using recently because originally in, in the 1980s, when we launched uh, some strong complication, it was an editor basis okay, at that time. Um, because uh, we had the knowledge on eye complication. Okay? Mm -hmm. You could do small series on eye complication. But um, to do a basic movement, it's a lot of investment and you need and you need a lot of volume to do it. So at that time in the 1980s, we had not enough volume. So, uh, and to, to tell you something true, so our first marine chronometers in the 19th century, it was with the basis of, uh, of some other brands, okay? Mm -hmm. But after we were developing a full movement with this basis, okay? Uh, so now we still have on our entry level some uh, non manufacturer movement basis, okay? But we modify them to put uh, the silicium technology in it. Okay. Uh, why do we do this? Uh, it's because uh, otherwise we would not be able to, to start at 5,800 euro because uh, we would not be able to have enough volume. Um, and so it, it would be around 8,000. And we know that we have some watch lovers, some aficionados that would like to buy a Ulysse Narda but could not afford it. So it was, um, it was the market that was asking for it. And uh, to tell you the truth, so we have good sales. And also, another point is that in some countries, some other cultures are less interested than in Europe about the movement. They don't care about the movement. They just want the design and the brand. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's this watch, right, that yes. uh, you're talking about, this caliber. Exactly. So it is hybrid. You guys modify it to your specifications. Mm, exactly. Correct. Yeah. Huh? yeah. All right. So thank you for that. Thank you for asking and thank you for answering, Sebastian. Gerard has been replying in the time being. He writes, I was thinking about the very useful technical innovation of the perpetual plus minus calendar, which can be set back and forth. I mean, if you look for technical innovations and then he adds one comment additionally, which he writes, not if Ulysse Nanan has watches for daily use. I'm aware of the collection which contains very suitable watches indeed. So maybe I'm going to link this question together with another one, if I may, Sebastian. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think we should round up because we're gliding into 55 minutes. We had a question sent in to us. Ulysse Nanan was the first brand to use silicium in their movements. Did you discover any advantages? you did not anticipate in those 19 years because a lot of brands are now only discovering silicium yeah, yeah. Years later. so to answer these two these two main uh, questions so 
for the question about innovation, uh, we are still working on a, on a real strong innovation. It will be on the balance wheel. We launched it on our prototype watch that is the next that we presented uh, last year. Um, and this development will sh for sure arrive in the coming years in, uh, in more basic, more accessible uh, watches. Um, so yeah, we were the first round to discover the silicium. Um, to be honest, um, all the advantages of the silicium, you know, silicium is not new. It has been used for decades in, in, uh, in, electro in electronics, for example, and in many industries. Uh, I started my career in Sony in 2003, and uh, I can tell you that uh, a lot of uh, components of the TV devices or, or mobile phones were, were in silicium. So we know the advantages. What we were not expecting maybe is that it would be uh, finally um, so accurate and so adapted to the, to the watch world. And, uh, you know, our, our company uh, that is called Sigatech uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Sion, where we produce our uh, silicium component, uh, is, uh, is really still working on development on it. No, I think we did not imagine that we could do development on the silicium. The diamond seal that we launched in 2007, and we don't supply this, contrary to the silicium that we supply to other brands, the diamond seal, we keep it for us. We just use it for the escapement wheel and the anchor. And this material is a mix of diamond and silicium. Why? Because diamond is harder. It's the hardest uh, material that you can find. And uh, the components that have the more impact and the more shock in a watch are the anchor and the escapement wheel. This is why we have uh, the balance wheel in silicium and the escapement wheel plus the anchor in diamond silicium in, in the majority of our watches. Amazing. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Sebastian, I really yeah. think we need to pencil in another session. Um, I loved it. I love your energy. I love your knowledge. You have in-depth knowledge. Um, it's been fun. Um, tomorrow, I know you're watching. We're welcoming both Antoine yeah. and, and Fabrizio Bonamassa of Bulgari. Mm -hmm. One is head of watchmaking in Neuchâtel. One is head of design. It promises to be another fun session and technical and design. So, yeah. and Julia is, is, is cool, is a cool brand. It's totally different from us. Yeah. They have this, this uh, jewelry part, uh, this part of the design. Uh, you, you're going to see uh, some cool stuff. Thank you so much. Send my regards to your lovely wife and daughter. Thank and, you. Uh, I hope to welcome you soon back in Amsterdam, my friend. Yeah, and I hope that uh, all people uh, watching us had a, a good time. Uh, that answers their main uh, questions and uh, feel free to, to send me questions by uh, WhatsApp or by email. Uh, I'll answer it. Thank you. Thank you so much. See you Thanks, soon. Thanks, Alan. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.